Hi, I'm Judith Monroe, and this is my bathroom darkroom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a paper negative with your box pinhole camera and how to process it in your alternative process Kathanol developer. Are you ready? The first thing I want to do is just remind you of the things you need to have ready before you actually make your shot. So this is my uh, Cathanol developer. I've mixed that up from coffee and vitamin C and washing soda. You'll see um, this has got a 30 second to two minute um, or longer processing time. I have found um, that longer is better. Um, my water bath, which is just um, 10 to 30 seconds and then my salt fixer when I get to that point this room will have to stay dark or I will have a cover like this over top of it and they'll have to stay in the dark those um, negatives paper negatives will stay in the dark for 48 hours like this before I can look at them in the white light I also have my pinhole camera. I have my paper that I'm going to be using to make my negative. This is a notebook. So keeping notes for all of this, like I'm going to start writing down my times, both my exposure times and my developer times, so that when I come back to this, um, it helps me know what worked best for my camera. And the other thing is this lovely little clock because that's going to help me keep track of how much time things are in the different bits and pieces of chemistry. Oh yes, my safe light. And you'll be able to see it um, in just a minute, in fact. This is how it looks in the dark now. So the first step in my process is to actually open my paper, which I have kept taped shut. And it's inside a plastic bag. I'm going to move this so you can maybe see a little bit better. And I'm taking out a single sheet of paper. And closing this back up. And now I'm going to be putting this paper. I can feel the paper is a little bit um, more slippery or slick on one side than on the other. And that slippery side of the paper is the emulsion side of the paper which I'm going to make sure is facing up or pointing towards the pinhole in my camera. And um, for me to keep my paper from moving around in my pinhole camera while I'm shooting, I'm putting a little piece of um, masking tape on the back of it. And I'm just putting it right back into the back of the pinhole camera and I close it up nice and snug and now I can turn on my lights my white light so now this is ready to take outside and make an exposure. Okay, so here I am in my front yard and I'm gonna place my camera. This is the pinhole and the shutter. And I'm gonna place it really close to those succulents. So you can see how this is working. There you go. Um, I've got it really close to the succulents 
because um, I want my picture to pretty much be full of the succulents. And I've got a timer set for one minute. That's a really good starting um, exposure. And I'm just gonna reach around, make sure my camera stays still and open that shutter. Make sure it's out of the way. It's okay that it's slightly, um, not exactly a minute. And so my minute has started. So I might even have, I don't know, a minute and 15 seconds. Probably a good thing. I'm just gonna gently take my hand away and wait for those 45 seconds to continue to go. I wanna make sure that my camera is sitting on a um, still surface so we can see that it's just sitting there on the ground. It's not moving around. My subject isn't moving. There's a little light breeze, but succulents don't move in the breeze, so that's really good. If things moved, then they would not be sharp. And I've got just about 10 more seconds left. And so um, this is kind of the exciting part. <laughs> All right, so that's my timer going off very quietly. And then I'm carefully coming and closing that shutter back up. Closing it back up. I think I'm going to have to replace my shutter next time. My tape has gotten a little funky there. All right, we're going to go inside and process it. So I'm back in the dark room now, and I have to make it dark, which feels really dark. Um, when we've been out in the bright sunlight, but now I'm going to open up my camera And I'm going to take out that piece of paper I'm also going to make sure to take off the tape on the back And I'm going to slip it into, I'm going to move some things so you can see a little bit better. So you're going to watch, I'm going to slip it just under the surface. You'll notice I'm not touching it with my hands. And I'm looking at the time that was on the six. So this is called agitating. This gentle up and down. And I'm going to do this um, for like three minutes. And um, this is just the part that requires patience. So you can see my fingers just lifting the corner of this up and down a little bit. And this is requiring constant agitation. All developer, when we're developing paper, we want to constantly agitate. That's helping that um, developer do its job and um, interact with the silver halide, the silver salts that are in that emulsion. And that's been one minute, <laughs> so we have two more minutes to go. Let me just kind of see this. And you can see I can sort of see the paper, so I can kind of check it after a minute and use my tongs. And I'm not really seeing anything. So. If I were seeing some kind of an image, I might consider taking it out. So I'm going to let this process, like I said, for three minutes. And then I'll take it out no matter what, and I'll assess it. Because I'm, I'm doing two things here. I'm testing um, 
my development time, which I'm pretty secure in that three minutes is going to give me enough development. So and I want to make sure I'm not looking at the wrong side of the paper. Yeah, no. And I think I'm seeing just a tiny bit of an image come up. I don't want to pull it out again. I'm going to let it continue. to develop. And I'm almost at the two minute mark. Sometimes, depending on your conditions, your water, what coffee you've used, this can be as quick as a 30 second development process. When I've tested this before, I've been um, happy with results at two minutes to four minutes, so that's how I've decided to go with the three minutes. So I'm just over two minutes now. So one more minute, um, just under, and I'm gonna actually take it out no matter what. And then I'll decide what I might need to do I'm, as far as my pinhole exposure. So there's a couple of different things that I'm working with here, a couple of different variables. Hence the notebook, because I need to keep notes so that that can help me in the future. We've got almost just about five more seconds, because I can see through my because uh, I'm next to my clock. All right, so I'm going to pick this up now. And I'm going to let that kind of drip. I don't know if you can see. And then put this, uh, I think I see a really faint image. A really faint image. Super hard to see in the dark. So I just... Um, 10 to 30 seconds in this water, just to kind of stop the process. You can kind of see, actually it's interesting, I can see that really pale image easier with my camera than with my naked eye. <laughs> I'm going to let that drip there. And so I can see that there's a super faint, even with my eye, um, I can see that there's a super faint image. So what I need to do is reload my pinhole camera and try another exposure. So I'm gonna cover up my fixer because when I walk out the door and light gets in here, I still wanna fix that. I'm gonna know that that's number one. I'm gonna write in my notebook that um, attempt number one was a one minute exposure in the camera in bright sunlight, lighting conditions matter, and that it had a three minute developer development in the caffeinol. And I'm going to try next a two minute exposure in the pinhole camera and I won't make you watch all of that, but when I pull that out of the caffeinol, um, I will show that to you in here. So here's my um, second attempt. The two minute exposure in the bright sun with my pinhole camera. And you can see it's still got a very dim image on it. You can kind of see just barely in this area. There's a little bit of darkness over here. Um, what I really want is this to be look pretty dark, even if I don't really um, in the darkness recognize the image. I want to see an image. So um, what I'm going to have to do is um, there's two things that can help make this image darker. The first one is to spend more time 
in the developer, which I might try next time. I might try four minutes in my developer. And then um, the other big thing is going to be more exposure in the camera, um, more time. So the first try was one minute. This was two minutes. And I'm not going to um, be shy about it. Every time I'm going to double, because those are stops of light, and that's kind of how photography works. So this next exposure I'm going to try is going to be a four-minute exposure in the pinhole camera and four minutes in my Cathanol developer, and I'm going to write all of that down. Um, so I'm going to show you that, and then also before the end of this video, I'll show you uh, one time what the it looks like in the light. Um, I have a spare piece of paper um, that I sort of messed up anyway, um, and I'll show you what this looks like because I know it's hard to see in the actual darkroom. So hang on, more to come. So here is my four minute exposure and four minute developer. Um, and you were still seeing a really pale image. So I'm beginning to think I'm having another problem, um, which is good for you all to be aware of. Um, I actually am using Cathanol developer. I mixed up a couple of days ago, so it's not fresh. And that can really affect traditional um, developer. So I'm going to, and I know from uh, past testing that four minutes um, in bright sunlight exposure and four minute development time should give me actually a really good neg. Um, and since it's not, I'm going to say that my developer has died, is too weak. And so I'm, I'm going to do this again and I'm going to mix fresh developers. So um, lucky for you, I'm still um, learning and you get to learn with me. So another take and lucky you, you're not sitting here watching me do this. Uh, you're just seeing the results. We'll be back. So what a difference fresh chemistry makes. This is looking a little darker because it's um, the water's getting um, dark too, but you can also see there's a lot more detail in this. There's all kinds of things going on. You can almost see succulents. Oh my gosh, isn't that exciting? So um, for me and my camera and my chemistry, uh, four minutes of exposure and four minutes in my Cathanol developer seems to work really well. This is um, the second time I've done this test, and so um, that's pretty cool. I'm going to put it into my fixer, my salt fixer. Look at the difference. Um, we're going to see. Um, so always mix fresh chemistry. That's one of the rules we want to make sure that we learn from this. Um, and even though my exposure time was four minutes, that does not mean that your exposure time was four minutes. I'm just going to close this here because I also want to show you a little bit of the process in the light. And um, I've also learned that it's really important that this stays um, fully dark. Like I made a little lid that goes over the edge of my uh, container because a little bit of light got onto my paper before. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light here. Okay, so this is a piece of the paper. Oh, look, you can see it's been exposed to some light. Um, and where it's kind of pinker and darker on one side, it's gotten more light. That's kind of like the lumen print thing. So this is what I would have, this is what I in the dark put in my pinhole camera with tape on the back so that when I picked my camera up, it wouldn't um, fall over. I want to show you in the light how I slip this in. So just kind of under the surface here. I'm in the habit of not getting my fingers in chemistry because 
Um, I've worked so long with traditional chemistry. Um, it's just a good habit. And then I don't have to worry about my fingers being quite so dirty. So um, we're going to see how long it takes um, because this has been exposed to a lot of light. This piece of paper should get relatively dark in this cap and all. Um, I didn't pay attention to what time I put it in. I want to say it's probably been in there for 15 seconds or so. I don't know. Um, but the longer that it's in here, it, the darker it's going to get. So you can see it's starting to get kind of a gray color to it. That's the cathanol um, developing the silver salts, the silver halide crystals in the paper that have all been exposed to lots of light. So because it's been exposed to light, this could potentially get completely black. But remember I talked about the longer the exposure and also the longer the time it's in the developer, the darker it will get. If we were in traditional chemistry, that paper would have turned completely black by now, just doing this in the white light. But you're starting to get an idea of what I'm doing because I know it was kind of hard to see in the dark. Also, check out how my stop bath turned slightly coffee colored. Isn't that cool? So this is just what I was doing for four minutes before. And you can see um, it's just turning this paper gray. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in that stop bath, which would stop the development. Um, I'll turn the lights out again. I'm not going to open this up in the light. Um, I would completely kill my prints that are in there. I want to show you briefly, move some things around here. So um, I learned the hard way. Um, here are some of my notes. So see this interesting um, pink stain there? That came from, and this is the one that was the most on top, um, it got kind of bleached out instead of being darker like this one. Um, and this is the kind of thing that we're looking for. But this big pink stain in the middle of it, that's because it didn't get fully fixed and was exposed to light because um, my container just let in a little bit of light. So um, this shows you we really want to be careful. And this has got to stay in the dark for 48 hours. So I'm not going to open it up and look at it. Um, I will make another video where um, we take these negatives and make a contact, make a positive contact print out of it. Um, but this is going to be it for right now. I hope you enjoyed getting to see a little bit of the behind the scenes darkroom work um, that goes into pinhole photography. As you can see, that took about two hours. There was four shots with that pinhole camera. To remind you, I loaded the camera with the paper in the dark. Um, I started a test. I did a 60 second um, exposure out in bright sunlight and I brought that in and I was trying my three minute developer with the cap and all. It wasn't light enough, dark enough, wasn't dark enough. And so I went from one minute to two minutes and that still wasn't dark enough and I went to four minutes so I'm doubling. If I had started out too dark at 60 seconds I would have backed off to 30 seconds and played that game until I got closer to what I was looking for. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a positive from that negative. You'll get to see that negative a little bit better because it needs to be protected in that salt fixer for 48 hours before I can let it see the white light. Don't forget, subscribe, like, comment. Thanks. Bye.